So, we will continue with the sound within enclosure. Now, let us go back to noise a little bit, we will come to auditorium back. This is a principle which is applied to both. So, two types of sounds we actually distinguish, one we call as airborne, another is structure borne, no, right? Airborne and structure borne, right? Now, what is airborne sound? My source is in air, right? For example, I, I have a speaker, it is hanging somewhere, it is actually is a airborne sound, airborne sound, you know, generated by vibration in the air itself. As opposed to this, I am stamping onto the ground. The sound is generated because of the vibration of the structure itself. That is called a structure bone noise, right? So, see this diagram. In this diagram, you have a source here suspended, right? So, from this source, it can pass through the wall and reach here. So, we call it airborne direct. Airborne stands for generation, where it has been generated, right? And then it can pass through the wall, partition wall, it can pass through the partition wall and directly reach to the next room or next space, this is the next space. So, we call it airborne direct. But it can also reach through the wall themselves, because velocity of sound in solids will be somewhat more and it can go around the wall and reach there also, because you know like from diffraction and similar principle, it can actually move down to that side. So, this is called airborne flanking, airborne flanking, flanking through. Also, if I have a window open, it can come here. Again, airborne flanking through the air, this is airborne flanking through the structure. This is airborne flanking through the structure, airborne flanking through the air, because windows are open. So, you keep all the windows of your classroom open and next classroom is also open, there will be disturbances from this room to the other. And uh, uh, right, so this is how it is and it can even go like this, flanking structure bone or flanking structure bone. So, this noise paths one can visualize if one to do some noise control. You know, you find the noise is high, then you got to do the control. So, you can visualize, you have to visualize this part. So, airborne sound is one generated in the air, where structure borne sound is something like this. The machine is kept onto the floor and it is causing vibration of the floor. So, it will generate both airborne noise as well as structure board noise. Airborne noise will come because the, after all the machine will cause vibration of the air in the surrounding and structure bone noise because it will cause vibration of the structure and then structure bone flanking can be there, structure bone direct because you know bone in the structure, the one vibration of the structure itself and that goes directly to the receiver. So, that structure bone right, structure bone direct, structure bone flanking also can be there, vibration of the structure to the next you know the vertical wall and then to the right. Then this is airborne flanking, because it will have airborne noise also. A machine if I keep it on the floor, on the first floor let us say, this is in elevation, this earlier one is in plan, this is in elevation. So, if I keep a machine on the first floor, it will cause vibration of the structure. So, therefore, it will have some airborne noise generated, right. And this airborne noise can transmit through the structure itself, wall and go to the next room below. That is air, uh, the structure bone flanking through the structure and it can also have structure bone, you know airborne noise also. So, you will have all airborne noise flanking also or airborne direct, you know all combinations are possible. So, structure bone noise are by the source which are placed on the structure. Airborne noise are those where source is placed in the air, right. And you got to identify the path in order to do a noise control in order to do a noise control, right. So, this is what the definition is important. Originates in air, source is in air, source is in structure and generated by impact on the structure itself. So, you want to control both of them, do it in a different manner. Principle of controlling noise control. Now, we talked of sources outside earlier and then that comes to the, you know, you maintain distance, directivity, direction and all that, trees, whatever we talked about, barriers. But now, you have the source within the space and you do not want it to go to the other space or within that space itself, you want a specific sound, other sound you do not want. So, such kind of situations we are looking at. So, 
AFN is airborne flanking in this diagram, airborne direct, airborne flanking through structure, structure bone flanking, structure bone direct, etc., etc. That was then the diagram I explained already. Right? Okay, so you have to identify the path. Airborne, how will you control? First, you have to identify the path. Of course, you know the source. If the noise is airborne, then you control through absorption and if you don't want it to go to the next room, then provide insulation between the two. I mean, I am talking in qualitative terms now, we will quantify them, right. Insulation related relates to transmission from one room to another room. This room is insulated, so something from outside is not able to come. Absorption generated within and absorbed. Absorption by the wall generated the source is inside the room and I make it to get, get absorbed in all the walls and ceiling and all that. So, if I want to control the noise generated within this space that I do not want, you know, for example, is a machine, it is vibrating and I do not want some other person might be working somewhere, you know, some workspace is there. I do not want this noise to be too large, then I provide a lot of absorptions so that reflected sound does not come back and reinforce the direct sound, right, reinforce the direct sound. So, I was talking to you about anechoic chamber, you remember, that will only have direct sound. So, I must have lot of absorption, it should not come back, all, all should get absorbed, right. Now, insulation means it should not come from the other room. So, I insulate this room, it should not come from the other room. Then structure bone noise, how do you do it? Structure bone noise is generated by vibration of the structure itself. So, it is essentially vibration isolation. Put the between the source and structure, you put some sort of isolator mounting and that will ensure that you do not transmit the sound. Fortunately, the sources that we cause a structure bone noise are usually machines, right. And their frequencies are known by and large, I mean dominant frequencies will be known. They are not random frequencies like many other cases one might come across. So, these are structural noise. So, generally we provide either discontinue the structure, cut you know separate some sort of construction joint that will ensure the noise from this side will not go to the other side, right. Obviously, construction joints are not provided for noise, but if required you can do that or you can put a resilient material in between which will ensure that your noise is not transmitted to the other side, vibration is not transmitted. Isolation is the other one as I was saying mounting. So, we define in this context something called transmission coefficient. When I am talking of insulation, we talk in terms of something called transmission coefficient. You know, this is like absorption, this is ratio of energy transmitted to energy incident. You know, absorption was the ratio of energy absorbed divided by ratio of energy, I mean, you know, ratio of energy absorbed by energy incident. Here we are saying ratio energy transmitted by energy incident. For number of surfaces, again, you can define abs average absorption coefficient. So, it will be given by, you know, tau bar S i. So, tau bar will be given like this weighted average, surface area weighted average, like we did for absorption. Okay. So, it is similar, it is similar, it is similar and tau bar, so tau bar is the average absorption coefficient and uh, right. So, then just as an example, if we follow this and if I have a hole, what will be its transmission tau value? If I have a hole, yeah, it will be 1. So, you see it can disturb the hole presence of a hole in a solid wall can reduce the insulation quality significantly. So, leakages should be avoided. If you are doing it insulation, leakages should be avoided as much as possible. <coughs> say tau 1 otherwise is 0 0.1 let us say for a wall, right. And in case there is a crack developed with 10 percent area, tau bar will be what? It was 0 0.1 because it was all solid. Now, a crack has developed and the area of the crack is let us say 10 percent of the area, I mean crack or hole or whatever it is, some integrity loss has been there. 
So it will become 0.91 into 1, because 90% will have 0 0.1 still, and 10% will have 1. So if I, I get 0 0.19, you know, it is actually transmission has doubled. Transmission has nearly doubled. So, you know, that's what that's what I was saying. Same in case of barrier, if you provide a gap, that would actually reduce down the delta value, dB reduction value will reduce. Similarly, here, in an insulated in a wall, if your joints are not proper and you have left holes or there is a crack or something of that kind, that can increase the uh, transmission significantly, right. So, here it was nearly doubled, I took an exaggerated scenario. So, this is what it is, noise transmission if I look at it. Now, this is a source machine, this is uh, the smart gentleman there, you know, he is in the receiver room. So, sound from here will be transmitted, partition wall which should have a good insulation. So, this is, you know, it will be transmitted in this manner. So, we talk in terms of, okay. Now, it is a continuous source, right, and generating noise at the same level. That would be typically the case when I am dealing with insulation. Random sound we will look at slightly differently. Let us look at kind of a, uh, you know, fixed sound. So, machines etcetera generate fixed sound, right. So, this is a machine which generates noise and I can assume the field here is diffused field by and large is a diffused field, right. And here also it results in a diffused field. So, let me call this, I think I am calling it LP source room or you know you can call it E 1, the energy source is L 1, this is L 2 and room area is A 1, this area is receiving room area is A 2. And I have a wall whose you know transmission value is known and area is also known to me. So, E s let us say, let me define E s as the energy density in the source room, energy density in the receiver room and they are all diffused I am talking now, they are diffused because I have a you know diffuse, diffuse scenario, but direct sound will also pass through because it will pass through directly that is separate. So, but I it, otherwise reverberant field is diffused field by and large. So, that is what I can assume and then sound level in the source room let me call it as LPS and sound level in receiver room is LPR. And say so steady state scenario because my machine is not stopping, I am keeping it on. So, you know noise level within this room and that room will remain same, they will not vary, they will not vary, they will remain with time invariant under that condition I am considering. If I put it off anyway everything is gone, so it is good, but uh, if it is on that is the situation I should see it. So, power incident onto the wall of the source room, we have already derived that earlier if you remember in terms of epsilon, that will be epsilon source room, how, what is the notation you are using? SR, we are calling it epsilon S, epsilon S, the source room not SR. So, epsilon S is the source room power into C divided by 4 into S, right. So, this will be the amount of energy incident, power incident on the wall of the source room will be given by this, right. Similarly, for the source room and receiver room, this will be, so S is now A 1 or S 1, whatever I am calling it, S is the notation I have used for and that will be for the, for the second room, it will be epsilon R C by 4 into area of that room, internal area of that room, because that is what we have taken and we are calling it alpha bar, remember we are calling that also as alpha bar of the source room and alpha bar of the receiving room, right. So, this I can find out. So, power incident I can find out, power incident I can find out for the time being, let us find it out that only power incident on the wall of the source room. So, in the source room epsilon s C by 4 S w is a area of the, okay, on the common partition wall this is the energy coming. So, common partition wall this is the energy that will be coming, right and this will go to the next room multiplied by tau. This is incident upon that wall multiplied by tau that will go to the receiving room, but receiving room also whatever comes in a part of it will be absorbed. 
So this is coming into the receiving room and it contributes to the receiving room level plus something is absorbed. So in a steady situation, actually I can equate. So energy transmitted through the wall is simply this. That's what we understand very easily because epsilon S C S W by 4 into tau is what will be transmitted. That's how we define tau, energy transmitted divided by energy incident. So multiplied by tau, that fraction, so that is a transmission coefficient of the wall that will be transmitted and in steady condition energy entering into the receiving room must be absorbed in the all surfaces, right? Because whatever is entering because the condition is steady, so we know how much is the energy absorbed in the surfaces, that is actually the receiving room energy if density if it is there, C is the velocity, S R stands for surface area of all the surfaces in the receiving room because absorption will occur through all the surfaces including the partition, including the partition right and average absorption coefficient of the refuse, you know uh, receiver room by 4 right this is this is fine this whatever this transmitted and that is lost through all the surface a part of it actually also get absorbed on the wall which means that it might come back to this room also. So if I do this then I can get ratio of S E by E R which will be you know I can write as S R by alpha R rest all will cancel out this will cancel out this will cancel out this will cancel out this will cancel out. So E S by E R will be S bar alpha bar by 4 and this I can write because we said that energy density is a function of P S square I C by 4. So rest all things remaining so it should be P R M S of course I am talking of P R square so you divide by P reference square take 10 log of both sides then you will get the decibel level change. So 10 log of both sides you get something like this and you get you know this is nothing but what is this 10 log of this minus 10 log of you know this can be written as 10 log of P S square divided by P reference square minus 10 log of P R square divided by. So what is this actually this is nothing but level in the source room minus the level in the receiving room and this one I can do two things I can simply separate this out 10 log 1 by tau this part I have separated out and this part is very much there 10 log surface area of the receiving room all surfaces multiplied by average absorption coefficient of the receiving room divided by the area of the wall separating the two rooms right and this is 10 log. Now this we define as transmission loss of the wall 10 log 1 by tau of any wall we call it transmission loss. So we call it transmission loss did I define it earlier I did not define perhaps transmission loss TL transmission loss I think somewhere I might have defined it TL is transmission loss. So transmission loss is 10 log 1 by tau for any wall transmission log is 10 log 1 by tau for any wall and uh, then LPS or rather delta dB reduction in the dB from the source room to the adjacent room is given by 10 log S R surfaces of the receiving room and absorption coefficient of the receiving room average absorption. In other words total absorption, total absorption of the receiving room divided by the area of the wall plus transmission loss. So transmission higher the transmission loss obviously this will be more but also receiving room absorption should be as low as possible I mean as you know as high as possible sorry as high as possible so that it can absorb good lot of it. So you know adjacent room noise you can control right. So this is how I can control so when noise source is inside the room itself increase the absorption if it is in the next room increase the transmission loss between the two right. So we, we come back to this right so the basically transmission loss between two walls separating or partition wall separating two adjacent room if it is high it will have noise control same thing goes into a periphery boundary also you know envelope. So if you have outside noise you want do not want it to come put insulation put insulation so that transmission loss you know of the periphery ceiling etcetera etcetera will be 
low, right? And how it, how, what, in what properties of the wall transmission loss, de loss depends, we'll look into that later on, right? So this is what it is. When noise source is inside the room itself, I, so far I talked of noise source in the next room. And if the noise source is inside the room itself, then let's see how it goes, right? You see, LP is equal to 10 log, you remember this, LW plus 10 log of Q by 4 pi R square plus 4 by R. And if I just forget about the direct sound, you know, that's what it is, delta delta p delta lp will be this term anyway will go out only remaining will be this so delta lp for two cases room absorptions let us say is r1 other one is r2 at any distance distance is same then this will be given by this formula right because this minus r1 minus r2 so this will be delta lp in other words it is this factor which will control the noise level because this you can't do much, your distances are fixed, directivity is fixed. So this will control the noise level. If the source is within, you have a machine in some corner and some workstation or something, some working place somewhere in the end and you don't want too much of a noise to be there. Like earlier good old days typewriting machine. So they generate noise and you don't want that noise to be disturbing the others. So you got to put a lot of absorbers in the room accordingly, of course. So R1 by R2 has got a role there. And for diffused field, fully diffused field, 10 log, you know, this term I just omit, I will get R2 by R1. So if you increase R2, delta LP will increase with R2 by R1. And what was R2? Room constant or R, R was S alpha bar by? 1 minus alpha bar, right? So, if R1 by R2 ratios will be simply alpha 2, 1 minus alpha bar, alpha 1 bar, alpha 1, right? So, this is what it is. So, you know, following from, uh, following from um, the same formula. So, that is how it is, that is how it is. You know, this direct sound, no, Q divided by 4 pi R square. So, distance from the source. So, for the same distance, it is, you know, and if we take only diffused field, which is far away from the source, then this will be the scenario. It's, I should obviously plan it to keep the source away from my, wherever I, I am working. So, R I can reduce it down and R I can increase, sorry, R I can increase and in the diffused area where the field is diffused, beyond the room radius, beyond the room radius, increase absorption will always ensure that the sound is less, sound is less, you know, finally, reverb, you know, or diffuse sound field will be less, so that is the point. So, you can actually in design you can use this. Now, you can have specific absorbers because frequency of the source will be known in such situation also. Frequency of the, you know, for example, I said typewriter, so we know their frequency or some other source, machine or similar sort of thing whose uh, 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 frequency will be known to me. So, when my frequency is known, then I can have absorbers which has got a absorption capacity corresponding to those frequencies themselves, right? Because absorption is also a function of frequency, absorption is also a function of frequency, right? Uh, after all, the types of absorbers, if you see, they are either, as I said, if I have a porous material, porous material, there are pores, then you know there will be frictional losses and the sound, reflected sound will be less. It cannot come back. You know, if you have a polished surface, it will reflect high. Porous surface will not reflect. So, absorption, right, and but it will also depend upon frequency, size of the pores related to frequency and things like that, it will depend upon frequency. At all frequencies, they do not show similar absorption capability. So, it is a function of frequency and uh, we shall see this characteristic. So, I can select accordingly type of absorber I require depending upon my source if I am doing it. So, there are three, four types of absorber. There are three, four types of absorber, right? For example, screen, just a screen. This is the backing, there is a gap, put a screen, put a screen. 
with some holes, then you get this sort of absorption where this is alpha value, this frequency, right? And at certain frequencies, you'll have peak absorption. Certain other frequencies, so mechanism is either by vibration, you know, it vibrates, so some energy is lost. Or through the pores, there's a frictional loss, heat generated. This is a kind of mechanism. And sometimes within the holes, there can be resonance. Size of the hole is such that it corresponds to the, you know, the, the, the resonance within the hole itself. In such cases, sound will not come back again. So there are three, four types of absorbers, like there are something called a porous cream. I'll just do it again. I'll come back to this in the next class as well, right? And remember that they do not improve the, not necessarily improve the insulation quality. You must distinguish between insulation and absorption. The one good absorber, not necessarily a good insulator. Insulation will depend upon the whole wall, backing and everything put together. While absorption is a largely surface type of property, right? So, supposing I have a brick work and it is very polished, it will have low absorption. But when it comes to transmission, well, it will be as good as not so polished surface. So, they, you must distinguish between the two. So, absorbent do not improve insulation, not necessarily they do. This I will come back again. And there are other kind of absorbers, something like you put a porous material onto the backing without gap or with gap. The characteristics, absorption ca characteristics with frequency starts changing, right? We will see that again, in the, as I said, in the next class. Then there is something called a membrane absorber. So, this was, first was a screen, porous screen, and then porous absorber on a backing. Then you have got membrane absorber, just put a plate, membrane, a plywood sheet or something of that kind. And then you can have something called a Helmholtz resonator, cavity resonator, cavity resonator. And you know, a modification of this will have something like this, where I have got perforated holes, slight modification. So, they are character, you know, absorption cap characteristics changes with the frequency. So, if I have a source, machine or something, and I know the frequency characteristic, frequency of the, frequency of the source, I can choose the absorber accordingly. Normally, you know, people just put it anything they like. In, you know, like it's, it's not the science is not that much used in some or other. In building, it is not that much used actually. But industrial situation or such office situation, if you know the principle, you can choose accordingly. You can choose accordingly. Just put any absorber is not the best thing to do. Better thing would be to do it accordingly. So we'll look into this in the next class. I think we'll break here. So we'll re-look re into these absorbers, the frequency at which they actually absorb maximum. We're not going to details. You can have mathematical modeling of this one. We are not going to do that. So that part is not there, but for our purpose, this itself will be good enough. So any more question?